All right, so we out here. Beautiful Sunday, Pride weekend. I mean, it's Pride month, but Pride weekend here in LA because I knew it was Pride weekend, but it's funny because it was just so traffic. I'll get into that regardless, but I had to come down to the stew for a nice Sunday. But I guess we got to start it off the way we always started off with welcome back to episode 39 of the Mac and Show. Q claps, your favorite place for bullshit, fun conversations, updates from your one and only Mackin. Thank you very much. Um, but no, it's a beautiful Sunday here in Los Angeles. It was gloomy at first, but it, it got to be a better day. And I didn't leave home at all today other than to get coffee because I was just being lazy. I was having a lazy Sunday. I'm, I'm home alone. I was for the last three days and until late tomorrow night just because uh my girlfriend um is at a bachelorette trip in florida until late tomorrow night so we just kind of been chilling but you know we've been vibing out honestly aka restarting the show power and watching a insane amount of power uh i forgot how good that show is we watched all the way through years ago like five ish years ago and i was like you know what I want to watch that show again. It's on Hulu. Shout out Hulu. And I figured, you know what? Start Power again. And so I've been watching Power. And it's weird because for a show I haven't seen in a while, I have way different thoughts than I had when I watched the show the first time. Now, I know what you're thinking. White dude sitting here watching Power. What what possible thoughts could I have on Power? But I kind of... I have like certain characters, my opinions of them have changed. Like one of them being Tasha, where at first I was like, okay, Ghost cheated. There's this, there's that. But like from the get go, Ghost opened Truth, his nightclub, so that he could get out of being a drug dealer. But Tasha, his wife, was like, no, like I married the dude who I wanted to be the biggest goddamn drug dealer in New York City. And that just like made him like. So sad. He did not want to... He didn't want to be the biggest goddamn drug dealer in New York City anymore. Plain and simple. He wanted to be a nightclub owner and a rich dude who doesn't have to care about, you know, the street life anymore. But his wife, his man's Tommy, etc. just kept pushing him and like, no, you can't... Without telling him you can't leave, but just like letting him know where his priorities are at. So like I'm on season two right now and it's been crazy. It's a stressful ass show to watch. It re- it's one of those shows that really makes you stressful. So, been doing that. Um, other watching shit. Oh my god, I'm officially. I- I'd like to announce that I'm proudly an AMC A list Stubbs member. Thank you very much. It's been a long time coming. Um, because we go to the movies probably like once a week at this point. Like maybe not depending on what week it is or like what what's going on but I just love going to the movies like I really am like a movie guy like don't get me wrong I love watching movies at home but something that you can go somewhere get some popcorn be at a theater and watch and like and truthfully you have to sit there and watch the movie opposed to like me just being on my phone the whole time I figured like okay we go to so many movies and I didn't know that that 24 a month for an A-list member literally makes tickets free Like, that's crazy. Again, it's three movies a week, I think. But if we're being honest, if you're going... And I know I'm going to sound hypocritical. But if you're going to the movies more than three times a week, then you probably got an issue. Because, like, you you don't need to go to the movie theater more than three times a week. But, no, because I went to the movies the other day with Jamie, Lauren, and Bridget. (sighs) Still tired, apparently. And... We saw this movie that I left the movie theater being like, this movie was dog shit. It was called In a Violent Nature. It was like a horror slasher movie. And it was called In a Violent Nature. And I left the movie like, yo, this shit sucked. But then I went home and I was like, okay, if this movie came out in mid-2000s, early 2010s, but mid-2000s, It would be a banger because like it gave me so much of Jason Voorhees vibes, like Friday the 13th vibes. Like it really did. It was slow. It was the typical plot of like 
this kid many years ago died and they buried him and then he came up from the dead and it was just angry and started fucking killing people. Like that's truthfully what it was. It took place in like the woods and everything. So I was like, okay, the old movies like Friday the 13th, Freddy Krueger, Michael Myers is in the category of his own, but those types of movies, I'm like, okay, I do like those. So I can't really pass too much hate to this one. I think it's the fact that this came out in 2024 where I was like, I was judging pretty heavily. I was, but regardless, like I changed my opinion a little bit. I actually didn't mind the movie that much. There was like a good four or five parts where I'm like, this shit sucks. Like you need to take this out of the movie ASAP, but all in all, I didn't think it was bad. If you want to get some like nostalgic horror vibes, go check, go check it out. I don't think it'd be a waste of money. Just go, go see what's up with it. But we saw that, uh, we saw strangers, the new strangers with Madeline Pesh and first off Madeline Pesh, beautiful straight up. I'm a Riverdale fan. So I've known who she was for a while, but when this movie came out, I was obsessed with the first strangers, the first strangers movie arguably one of the creepiest movies I've ever seen. And I was like, all right, if that's the case, then this one's got to be a banger. And I went to go see it. It was a really good movie. There's going to be three parts to it, which I'm kind of intrigued by. I'm down with. Because usually movies like that, you don't get a three-parter. And then like with the original Strangers movie, the girl di- the girl lives in the end and the strangers get away. So it's like you know, what's, what's going on with this? Is that just that? So this one plays off that, I think. And it's going to kind of be like a cat and mouse game of like, they're just going to keep coming after her until she dies. But no, I thought it was really good. One thing I was surprised on, and maybe it was just like the point of it was that there are certain points in the strangers, the new one that gave me like scream vibes to it, where I was like, all right, this is trying to be satire, like kind of, you know, them being dumb and just like not running away not and I know it's a scary movie but doing certain things where I'm like all right I think this is intentional and not like intentional in a way of like how all movies are but just like they're trying to make a point of like them being kind of dumb not sure and then Madeline Pesh from seeing her on Riverdale her character Cheryl has been in a lot of scary situations where she's had to like scream out of fear and shit like that and her how she plays scared in Riverdale almost seemed more dramatic and theatrical than in strangers. So I was like caught off guard. I was like, Whoa, you have all this in your arsenal. Where, where's it at in the movie? Like what's up? And so I was waiting to see that. Didn't see it, but overall I'd give the movie like a 8.5 out of 10. The ending's nice. Like she lives, but then clearly the ending scene is of her in a hospital bed. It's raining and then you can see the strangers and stuff. So it's going to continue to go. I'm hype about that because like horror is horror and comedy. Always teetering on like what um, genre is my favorite movie. So it's it goes back and forth every time. But that's about it. But I really, really like that. And that was really my movie weekend or movie week, to be honest. It was pretty fire. Not going to lie. But no, other than that, I'm trying to think of like, oh, so... Speaking of, like, other stuff I watched, I've usually been a fan of the Nelk Boys. Like, I'm not I'm not one of those people that, like, when they switched from just doing weird, pr- like, the old pranks to what they do now, I was never like, eh, where is it? Because you evolve with the content. Like, Nelk Boys can't do their old content anymore. That's literally, it can't be done. Like, they have to prank people. Like, everyone knows who Nelk is. So, of course, like, it's not going to work. So, I was never, like, one of those people that switched on, like, Oh, but when they added certain people to Nelk, I was just like, okay, like, I'm not like Steiny, Salim, even Kyle, like, so what I'm referring to is they had a pot and Bradley Martin, holy shit. And so Nelk did a podcast the other day with Mike Malak, Bradley Martin, Nick Naircina, he's a YouTuber who used to be their editor, Steiny, Kyle, and Salim big cast for a podcast, but they just kept going back and forth on so many things that like, it's just, well, first off, when it comes to the Nelk podcast, I couldn't agree more or just Nelk in general. I almost couldn't agree more with Andrew Schultz. Like they legitimately don't seem like 
genuine friends. Like they seem friends for the business. And I don't mean like when the camera goes off, they hate each other and they don't want nothing to do with each other. But every everything seems so on edge whenever they're around each other and so like jabby. And then then it gets deep to the point where it's like everyone never seems to cross any line because I, it seems like they're afraid that, okay, they're going to get kicked off now. And then, then you have Kyle who's always reminding everybody that he's the boss, which is just like, we get it. Like you started now, understandable. Then you have like Steiny who will like teeter certain lines, but like, and he'll come at Salim and then he'll come at Brad and they'll get in like real arguments. That makes me just think like, you guys definitely aren't like, you may be close, but just like, you're not close, close. Like, I just don't, I don't know. Their vibe just doesn't seem like they genuinely like each other or would genuinely do things for each other. Now, I'm sure in their world, Kyle or whoever might be like, well, I bought them this or I did like, yeah, they might do acts for each other where like financial acts for each other. But I, do, I just feel like if push came to shove and they really had to be like stupid loyal to themselves, like how Kyle and jesse were i just don't see it like i really don't like the way they bicker and just like try to like almost throw each other under the bus to kyle slash just like in public in general just makes me think like you guys aren't that close and i don't know if it's just like a they never were and it was for content that turned into a real job not sure but just like that's just what it is for me and then on top of that some of them are the most impressionable fucking people I have ever watched ever where it's just like if somebody says something with enough confidence some of them are like yep yep that's that's so true like and then they get this like attitude about it which is like say for instance Nell Cat on uh I forget what CNN newscaster um on the other day and they were asking about Biden and Trump and Kyle was seemed to get like such an attitude when he was talking about like the other dude was talking about voting for Biden. And Kyle was like, well, well, it's like, I know for a fact, you don't know any actual political facts or things Trump has done outside of what you've seen tweeted outside of what you've seen clip on TikTok or anything like that. And then he wants to go and have a full blown argument with someone about that. Now, the reason I don't sit here and have very in-depth political arguments with people is because I'm not out there researching it all the time. Like, I don't know, like, a basis of shit, but just, like, not that much. And then going back to the Mike Malak podcast, like, they're asking about the Logan shit and the George shit. And then you have fucking Salim, who, like, this one podcast, like, I already didn't think Salim added anything to Nelk, like, at all. But this one really solidified to me where I'm like, all right, like, you're just doing too much. Where, like, he came on the podcast drunk as shit. And he said he was drunk and was just grilling Mike nonstop. One about the fact that Mike talks really long and doesn't give yes or no answers. And that just shows what a fucking moron Salim is. Because it's just, like, literally there aren't that many things that are yes or no answers. Like, other than, do you want to go here? Do you want this? Do you want that? Like... What, how do you feel about this situation or who, like, what, is that a yes or no answer, Salim? Like, what the fuck? And then, again, Salim and Steiny being as an impressionable, impressionable as they fucking are, were grilling Mike about a small miniature piece of the podcast that Mike did with George. And they were like, well, you didn't have this back and blah, blah, blah. And even Brad called him out on it. They were like, Brad was like, you guys aren't fucking watching the entire thing. Like, this is literally what I'm talking about, that, like, you're only watching 10 seconds of it and then getting your opinion based on that 10 seconds. Like, I definitely think Sleem's a moron. Like, for that, he definitely seems like a dude who needs 15 seconds to convince it. Steiny, same way, where, like, I don't understand, like, what point they were trying to make, where, like, again, and I say this very confidently, there are so many social media people, and Logan said this, and I absolutely agree with it, that weaponize or pervert Christianity to get their point across about something or to get agreements on certain situations where, like, 
Steiny and Celine were both like, oh, well, like, you know, I don't fuck with the fact that, like, they were making fun of the religion and they were doing this and they were doing that. And, like, this is coming from people who, like, go to someone else's different culture, ruins wine tours, goes to Brazil and makes a joke out of it for a video and all this type of shit. You don't give a fuck about that. Like, obviously, you don't give a fuck about what anybody feels. Like, you just for this one podcast or just because, God forbid, you saw a TikTok or someone told, like, some Andrew Tate person told you, like, finding God's a good thing. And now you're on, oh, like, you know, Logan was shitting on him for his religion. First off, most of the time that Logan ever made fun of George was while George was actively trying to convince everybody that he was going to be a comedian. First off, if you're a comedian, you need to be able to take shit. Jokes. And then even after that, it's just like, give it a fucking rest. So, like, what... Why Why is that the one thing that's for sure off limits? You can make fun of literally every fucking thing possible. But no, that's off limits. Like, Salim and Steiny will make fun of people's, that they're friends with or whoever, like, their weight, the girls they get, the money they get, culture, all this type of shit. Uh, you, you, uh, George, you guys were coming at him for his religion. That's, that's where I crossed the line. Give me a fucking break. Like, what do you guys give a shit about religion? Truthfully, like nothing, absolutely nothing. I don't like, and again, they're going to be like, well, I don't have to go to this thing or that thing, or that. but you guys just don't give a fuck about that. Like you really don't. And like, I see so many social media people nonstop Ryan Garcia being another one where it's just like, you want to act all high and mighty on this religious train and like, don't come for religion and God got me and all that, blah, blah, blah. When behind closed doors, you're doing the most heinous shit in the world. Like, and I'm not saying that doesn't mean you can't stand up for someone, but don't fucking act like it's because you give a shit that anybody's talking about religion. You had a bone to pick with Mike because you're annoyed with him off of God knows what. Whether he made a comment about your podcast, whether you just don't like stuff he does, or you just don't like him in general. But like, having that basis be about religion was such a fucking cop out, and it was so hard to watch. Because, again, Sleem was drunk, whatever, but it was just crazy. And then going back into Sleem, trying to own Mike. Like, Sleem sat there and tried to own Mike about how Mike always has to talk in, like, paragraphs, doesn't answer things in a yes or no. And then Mike came back, and Mike did say, like, oh, this isn't, like, to slight you or anything like that, but was just, like, Mike's way of speech is definitely for a higher IQ individual. Now that doesn't mean Mike's out here talking about fucking nuclear technology and like theory and shit, but like he's to what Mike said, I 100% agree with it. He's painting like not every question can be answered in black and white. Yes. And no, like you have to paint a background, paint a picture that leads up to the actual scenario answering the question. Like, and Salim, of course, being who he is and needing, instant gratification for like an answer so that he like needs that quick answer and mike owned him on it where he's like okay ask me some questions ask me some yes or no questions slim and then like mike rebuttaled with like all right slim if nelk got in some hot water and controversy and then people were saying why aren't you doing anything about it would you be annoyed he's like yeah but uh," like I, i don't know that podcast the end of it like most of it was fine the end of it just annoyed the living shit out of me because it really just showed A, how impressionable they are of, like, anybody with status or enough confidence behind saying something, they're absolutely gonna believe they're in, like, the Aiden Ross category of just being, like, oh, like, oh, my God, Andrew Tate, who's, like, such a man, like, said that I need to live my life this way. Yes. Or, like, this person who, like, sounds so confident. Yes. Like, and I'm not saying you can't like sit there and agree with someone who sounds confident because that's all part of selling some shit. But I've just never seen it like with Nelk. Like they're, I don't know. They obviously do extremely fucking well. Like fuck me, right? Like, and I don't dislike Nelk, but the way they go about things sometimes just annoys the ever living shit out of me. It's fucking insane. But that's what you get views for. That's what you get content for. And obviously they're killing in every other aspect of their business, like from Happy Dad and the podcast and the vlog like the video and shit like that so they're doing good so honestly who gives a fuck about what i think but that was just the one episode that really made me like holy shit um 
But going back to a, a lighter, well, still beefing, but a lighter subject in a way, I'm absolutely convinced the WNBA players are annoyed with Caitlin Clark. Now, not to be one of those fans that's just like, oh, of course they are. Like, the NBA was annoyed with LeBron when he first got it. People, of course, want to target the next new thing. That's nothing new. Like, that's regular in sports. But I agree so much with what, um, not Jordan Farmar, but fuck, why am I forgetting his name, Nick? No, but a former Lakers player was talking about it. Oh, I know his name. But regardless... I agree so much that I don't necessarily think Caitlin Clark getting targeted is the worst thing in the world. Like, it shows she is here. Like, she's the person that everybody's watching. Of course people are going to target her. Where are her enforcers? Like, I agree with that point so much where it's just like, if you were on the court, if anybody in the world, anybody, treated Steph Curry... Draymond would, I saw a tweet, Draymond would literally go federal. Like, it would, you he'd be in jail if someone was treating Steph Curry the way Draymond's getting treated. If someone wa- ran up on Kyrie like that, Luka's coming in. Like, if someone ran up on fucking LeBron like that, like, he, and they did. He's got J.R. Smith and David. Like, so many people to come to his aid. Like, if people had a problem with Kobe or... Wade, I know Shaq would have stepped up. Like, I just don't understand where the fever is, like, in fo- Like, you got to have your stars back. Like, that's your star. Not only is that your star, that's the WNBA star right now. Like, you have to be able to sit there and, like, ready to fuck shit up for her on account of her. Like, that one play that the girl came in, called her a bitch, and just, like, basically shoved her to the ground. Everyone was kind of sitting there like, what? What? Huh? You got to you got to be ready to get yourself attacked too. Truthfully, like you can't keep letting her get treated like that and cuz other teams are going to see that and they're just going to be like, "Alright, we can keep doing it." Fuck it. She's no Caitlyn may be annoying the shit out of me. No one's going to do anything about it, so I'm going to fuck her up. Like straight up cuz I don't think it's going to stop. Like that's sports. Like and I know Caitlyn probably is like, "Damn, I didn't think this is what I signed up for." She's going to learn like that's just part of sports. If the if the WNBA wants to be in that world, that's what's going to happen. Baseball, basketball, football, hockey. Like, it's it's not some, like, lover or or shit. It's some shit. Like, even look at Luka Doncic right now. Not from, like, throwing punches. Do you think that dude loves anybody on the court? You see how he talks to fans and other players? No. Like, there's going to be heated-ass times. And that just means, like, you're here. You're finally in the big league. So, I definitely do think it's, like, targeted for sure like there's no way around that like people are literally going out of their way to like fuck her up but just like that's the price for being the star truthfully that's the price for you know making waves and she's one of them but also i am a believer that like other WNBA players like it's one thing to target her play her hard like defend the shit out of her this and that but like when you got angel reese who's on the fucking sideline cheering like they won a championship for someone bodying Caitlin Clark, like Caitlin Clark, nobody else. Caitlin Clark is the reason y'all are getting charter flights. There's more eyes on the sport. There's more fans in the seats. There's more viewers at home. There's at no, I will not make another argument that there's somebody else out there that like they're also doing it. Don't get me wrong. Angel Reese, great player. Camila Cardoso, great player. Cameron Brink, great player. And then obviously you have your players like Asia Wilson, Kelsey Plum, uh, Diana Taurasi, Brianna Stewart, except of course like the, the people who have been in the NBA, WNBA already. But that is a credited to Caitlin motherfucking Clark and nobody else. On a Monday, Caitlin was just like, yeah, I'm hoping we can get charter flights. Wednesday of that week, they just so happen to get charter flights. So like, I don't want to hear that like there, both can be true. I don't want to hear that there's not targeting because there is, but I also don't want to hear that like all the cries about it because this is sports. Like it's going to happen. She just needs people to back her the fuck up because like that's what teammates are for. But obviously she's been doing good. She's averaging like 17 right now. She's killing. So I'm, I'm excited to see how the rest of the WNBA season pans out because like I still think she's her. She's a rookie. 
but I still think she's hurt. So I'm just waiting to see that. And then I talked about it a little bit, but back to NBA playoffs. We got the Mavs versus the Celtics. I got Mavs in six. I don't think it, there's no way either team is sweeping the other, but I do have Mavs winning the finals in six because Luka is just a psychopath. Luka is the perfect psychopath for a finals and a finals MVP. On top of, I got to throw my hand up that I'm one of those people that was absolutely mean as fuck to Kyrie Irving on social media when all that stuff was going on. I was very heated. He was annoying the shit out of me. It's mostly because I just wanted him to play basketball and he just was refusing to do so. And I, hey, I take accountability for that. Kyrie Irving, I'm sorry. I like seeing you kill on the court. I think Dallas is a perfect fucking place for you. You with that with that psychopath right there. And I say that as a compliment because Luka Doncic is a, a absolutely what the NBA needs right now. A dude who is just a complete crazy man on the court. Going to give you basically 30 plus every night. And there's really not that much guarding him. Like, you really can't. And I don't mean that in the same sense of, like, Kyrie. Like, there's no guarding Kyrie because his athleticism and quickness and ball handling, et cetera, there's just, like, no doing it. Luke is just an anomaly. Just like, I don't know, he throws up a shot, it goes in. Simple as that. And I think it's going to be a very good series because obviously you got Tatum, Brown, you got – Derek White. <sighs> if Chris Stapps Porzingis plays for Boston, that changes things a little. So, no, I'm I'm very excited for this playoffs. I do think the Mavs are going to take it in six. That's what I wa- Not only do I think that's what's going to happen, obviously I want that to happen too. Like, I want the Mavs to get another championship because seeing Kyrie get another one on a different team, Luka getting his first one, that would make me a excited individual because I'm a big Luka guy. My guy, Huka Doncic. So, that's NBA talk, and I guess we'll have to see. And that game doesn't start until Thursday, I think. Thursday or Friday. One or the other. But, no, we're going to have to see what what the NBA Finals have in store. But I'm going to be tuning in for just about fucking all of it and see where it can go. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Oh, it's funny because, and I'm not going to, like, name names, but People that I work with are friends with other higher up, higher up individuals in LA and whatnot. And I think I realized that one of my callings I think would be great at would be like being a billionaire's like one of his personal assistants or like houseboy. Where again, without going into specifics, there's a very wealthy dude who lives in Los Angeles. He has houses on the East Coast, West Coast, down south, all this type of shit. And But one of his houses just happens to be in the Hollywood Hills. And I was told that one of his personal assistants is his L.A. personal assistant, who obviously tends to this guy when he's in L.A. And when he's not, he just tends to the house and makes sure everything there is good. Which means, essentially, if you're working for somebody and they own, let's say, a $30 million house, and you have to be that personal assistant for the house... You know how many days a year you get to that house is just in a way yours? This that's a piece of shit way to look at it. But I just mean like this person you work for obviously is traveling all the time, isn't gonna be in this location all of the time, even most of the time. And you just have to make sure stuff's good, it's clean, packages are gone, if you need if he needs errands in LA, someone's come whatever it may be. Other than that, you just live there. That's awesome. Like that's really, really awesome. Now I've house sat for my bosses before. And I loved every second of it. Loved it. Because it made me, for that week, I've been like, hell yeah. Like, this is cool. This is a cool life right here. Like, waking up in this house, doing this house things. Like, it was cool. So, when I found that out, I was just like, I need to find a billionaire that needs a personal assistant. Because I got you. And obviously, they're not going to stiff you on pay. Because they're billionaires. And that would be fucking awesome. Like, I will be somebody's houseboy. Oh, you want me to make sure that, you know, all the shrubbery looks good and that the mail's gotten and that the house is nice and clean and lived in? Say no more. I'm your man. Um, So I thought that was, like, kind of crazy. 
Um, and fuck it, I'll cook myself meals there and shit too. Like it, it'd be a good time. I would make sure that house is spick and span, beautiful, nothing bad goes on. But it's just funny that that's like an actual thing that like people do. Like I would love to sign up for that. Um, but going back to funny tweets and my funny tweet of the day is that someone tweeted that I wonder if in medieval times or way back when if anybody was wrongfully executed, like if chefs were wrongfully executed because they just didn't know what allergies were back then. Like imagine like way back when, like, you know, 15, 1400s and so on before 60, whatever, that like you create a dish for someone and they're just wildly allergic to something in that dish and you make it for like a ruler and just someone dies. So they just execute you. Like, I think of that type of stuff all the time of, like, back in the day, day, like, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years ago of just, like, maybe not even that long, but just, like, before crazy modern medicine, before certain concepts were understood of just, like, you could legitimately be killed. Like, going back, Kyrie Irving would probably be killed if people in the 1400s watched him play basketball. They would be like, holy shit, this guy's a witch. Like, no one's supposed to be able to move like that. Like, imagine being 6'8", in you would literally be a god. Like, it's just crazy to me. Or sometimes when you think about it, like, if you lived in town A, and you robbed everybody and moved to town C, two towns over, you'd probably be good for life, and you'd just be rich. Like, imagine that. No technology, just... Like, medieval times, shit, no cars, no phones, no lights, like, nothing like that. Just, I'm going to take all your stuff, and I'm just going to skedaddle my ass on to, like, 100 miles this way. You think people are going to find out where you are, especially after time goes on, you grow your... People are going to recognize you. Like, you know how easy it would have been to steal then? I mean, even, obviously, in, like, the, the 40s when they're... But I just mean, like... Literally, like, you couldn't move somewhere and people, like, be like, oh, I'm a new settler here. This is all my stuff. What are they going to contact each other on what? Parakeet being like, hey, has this person moved to your town? Like, someone from our town stole a lot of stuff. Like, they're not going to know that. They'd have to go make that journey themselves. So it's kind of crazy thinking about what it was like in the olden times because, like, they just lived so obviously without resources so it's like what were you going to use to get things done like nothing so i just kind of i kind of found that funny um also because my for you page and explorer page on instagram is just full of dogs right now and other fun animals and i love it i'm here for it. i don't want it to change but it just makes me think all the time either do animals have internal monologues and if so what are they like like, say, you know, there's there's a TikTok trend of uh, girls owning boy dogs, and it's just, like, the boy dog just sitting there, like, admiring the shit out of the girl, being like, I like you, and you're pretty, and you have a good smile, and you're awesome, and all this type of stuff. And I'm like, it almost seems so accurate, where I'm just like, this deadass does seem like what the internal monologue would be in this boy dog looking at his girl owner. Or, like, when they have a stick, they're just like, are they actually thinking about something? Is that something like, I like this thing. I don't know what this is, but I like it. Like, obviously they respond to their name. They'll respond to food. But like, sometimes I just think that's because of repetition. I don't know if that's because they understand what the word food means. But then again, like, who, like, and then I wonder, I'm like, is barking actually like words to them? Or is it just like a sense of some shit? Or like, growling and you know lions and tigers like are they understanding each other is it more of a feeling thing can they read each other's minds like it's this is such a high thought but i always wonder if animals have internal monologues because if they do i would love to know what that internal monologue is just because like why not it's a sick animal i think it'd be dope um but no honestly i know this was a oh last last but not least because this podcast knows I'm a huge Harry Potter fan. A huge Harry Potter fan. And I never think this film gets the respect it deserves. 
but someone tweeted clips from the third movie, Prisoner of Azkaban, talking about how, by a long shot, it was the best out of the series and so much changed then. And I want to say to whoever tweeted that, thank you so much. Because every time I talk to people about Harry Potter, my favorite movie out of the series by a long shot is Prisoner of Azkaban. Because there's so much that goes on that you finally learn there from you get to meet the uh, Harry's godfather and like Sirius Black as a character, which is awesome. Learn a little bit more about his family then. You learn who Peter Pettigrew is. You learn that um, Lupin is a werewolf and his stuff. Snape kind of com- Snape comes in and defends Harry for like the first time. And like just the way it was shot, the emotions behind it, like just everything that goes on, like I by a long shot think Prisoner of Azkaban is the best Harry Potter film. I think that's the turning point of what really kind of made it dark. Cause like it's a known thing that in Harry Potter, like in the beginning of the movie, the Warner brothers symbol comes up on all of them. And throughout the movies, it gets darker. It gets creepier. It gets colder. Like, and that's just like the sense of how the movie series goes. Cause not, not that it starts off all jolly. Like of course shit goes on and Sorcerer Stone and Chamber of Secrets and everything. But just the overall vibe is just like there's bad stuff happening as it goes on from like Voldemort finally starting to come back, Death Eaters being a thing, Dumbledore becoming old, people die. Like it's it's that. And I think Prisoner of Azkaban is by far that segue that really changes everything. And I think that's the best Harry Potter movie. Now call me a fucking nerd. I don't care. Harry Potter is by far the best movie series of all time. No comparison. I won't debate it, but I will. I'll have a good time debating it too. But no, it's it's Sunday. It's Pride. It's busy as shit out there. I was wondering why it took me so long to get to the office today, but that makes a lot of sense because I didn't realize it until I saw a flow, and I was like, fuck yeah. Shout out Pride. Shout out LGBTQ, for real. Um, but no, that's kind of I wanted to come in and shoot a quick little episode. I didn't really have too many updates. wanted to just kind of like give a little bullshit what's been going on in my life. I got some big decisions to make work-wise. Don't know how I'm going to make them, but we're going to do it. Um, And, yeah, really just chilling, to be honest, and vibing out. I'm going to go get some Chipotle after this because a lot of people have been talking shit about Chipotle lately. I'm not saying they're wrong, but it just still hits for me. So, obviously, big Chipotle guy. And, yeah, that's going to be my Sunday. It's got a lot to figure out work slash life-wise. So, we're going to go do that. We're going to still do the podcast regardless, but... Honestly, until next time, I appreciate, obviously, whoever watches even a couple seconds of this and hears me spew some bullshit. I promise we're going to get guests. I'm going to try to get it more structured. Um, I'm in the mix of wanting to find a co-host to bullshit back and forth with me. And, yeah, I've loved every second of doing it. We're on episode 39. Don't plan on stopping anytime soon. So, until next time, peace. Oh, yeah.